Sixty years after the surrender of Germany and the toppling of the Nazi government, a former SS officer living comfortably in the American countryside still dreamt of Hitler's Third Reich and spent his entire life savings erecting a large memorial to the men who fought for the vile regime and a shrine to his beloved Fuhrer who he fought for more than a half century ago. The memorial was abandoned after the creator's death and rumors of the location of this vile abandonment attracted the attention of three explorers. Today on Strange Places, Max Power and his crew go on an adventure to rediscover this lost monument to tyranny, and what they found at the site was truly surreal and disturbing. Follow Max and his crew on their journey to one of the most bizarre sites in the world. I can't even believe something like this exists. And see the important discoveries we made in the house of the man who built the structure. Holy sh**. The government wanted to keep all this secret. And take a look at the incredible, never before seen footage Max discovered on an old videotape left at the scene. Hello, and welcome to Strange Places, where we go places that most people wouldn't dare to venture. And I am your host, Max Powell. Today on Strange Places, we are going to be exploring a very controversial location. Right now, we're at an abandoned Nazi shrine and memorial to the Nazis who died in World War II. This memorial is right here in the United States, and it's probably not where you think it is either. Some of our best finds were not the memorial itself, but what we found at the memorial. I'm talking about this videotape. This is pretty unbelievable. I honestly can't even believe we stumbled across this footage. This is priceless footage. This shows what the Nazi memorial looked like before it was abandoned, and it has footage of the guy who built the place, the former SS officer. This footage is exclusive footage. You will not find this footage anywhere on the internet. There is only one tape of this made, and we found it, and we recovered it. Since it so well documents what the place looked like before it was abandoned, I have to have this footage for my video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert this into digital. This is gonna be recording this, and that will convert it to digital. The contents of this videotape were successfully converted into a digital format, and I will be repeatedly utilizing the footage in this episode. If you haven't already, please go down there right now, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on, it really helps me out a lot, and here's the best part, you'll be able to see Strange Place videos, the moment they come out, it's going to be right now, in five seconds. Before I continue, I'd like to be sure that everybody knows that we are not Nazis, we are in no way, shape, or form in support of this monument. And as an American, I am quite disgusted that such an abomination exists in my country. However, despite our disapproval of the memorial's message, we are still going to document and show you what's left. And now we take you to the abandoned Nazi memorial, Hitler shrine, and home of a former SS officer on strange places. Under the watchful sun, we made our way to our target. We're going to a completely insane location. We're walking through what looks like a jungle right now just to get to this location. It's like a Nazi shrine. This SS officer who served on the Eastern Front, he moved to America and became a farmer. Then he decided to build this shrine to Hitler. I remind you, this is in the United States. So this is going to be one of the, the most controversial episode of Strange Places ever. I'm with an unknown explorer who could not be shown for multiple reasons, including he's facing felony charges in 45 of 50 <laughs> states and Puerto Rico, and I think Guam too. I'm also here with Dan Lee. What's up, guys? Check out his channel. The link is going to be in the description. The woods surrounding the property were thick with brush and thorn bushes. Nevertheless, we made it through and gazed in disbelief at the strange structure across the wall. This is a bunker built into the side of a hill where the Nazi shrine is, and we're having a hard time getting across these wetlands. What we're gonna do is go back, chart a new path around the wetlands and the forest. So we were just having a discussion as we were walking up this path. We think that if he was like a concentration camp guard, um, he would have been prosecuted for war crimes. So we think that he was maybe, you know, in an SS battalion, maybe his infantry. Definitely someone who was, was fighting on the Eastern Front rather than being a concentration camp guard, which is how he avoided prosecution. We're going down. Finally, we discovered the former officer's road, road yeah. a trail that expedited our journey. <laughs> Holy. So right now, we just came through the forest. We just got onto the roof of this place. Behind me is this giant memorial. This is like something you see in Washington, DC, but it's not for American veterans. This is a memorial for the Nazis who died in World War II. 
uh, both civilians and soldiers. First it says, this memorial is dedicated to those German and other European heroes who fell in World War II, as well as to all victims of Allied persecution and genocide. May God ever be with them. Obviously he has a twisted view of history. He says that the people who should be memorialized are the people who died from Allied persecution. Also says German war-related deaths. The German Reich, 3.25 million. I think that's the amount of soldiers who died. That is actually a fact. The air war, uh, those were all the Allied bombings of Germany. Those killed about 1 million people. Sounds like it might be accurate. I think it was lower than that. Other war-related deaths amongst Germany's allies. It has a list. And what's interesting is they left out Japan. Actually, Japan used to be listed. However, it looked like it was an afterthought as the lettering was pasted to the black granite. I'd also like to point out that we're obviously not freaking Nazis. We're here to um, explore this insane location that we found in the middle of the United States. The middle panel was home to the memorial's most fallacious and outrageous claims etched in stone. Those who died after the war? It listed countries where Allied extermination camps were established to kill Germans. This is simply false history as the Allies built no camps dedicated to killing Germans. There were no extermination camps that the Allies set up. The camps established by the Allies in occupied Germany were POW camps designed to contain German troops as part of the disarmament and occupation of Germany. The only camps in which large numbers of German troops died were in the Russian gulags, harsh prisons where their inhabitants were starved and forced into hard labor. However, even the post-war gulags did not kill as many people as Hitler's concentration camps, camps specifically designed to kill people. 17 million Germans forced from their homes. Also probably correct. So this is true, but it should not be memorialized. Obviously German, Germany was the guilty party in this war. That was the result. Interestingly, some of this is right. All these facts have been cherry picked from history to depict Germany and the Nazis as the victim. I can't even believe something like this exists anywhere in the world, especially not in the United States. Europe was united against communism. The US and Great Britain united with communism. Europe was united against the communism. And the US and Great Britain united with communism. There's this huge patio where he believed that visitors would gather and pay tribute to this memorial and pay tribute to the fallen Nazis. This is like something out of a dystopian novel where the Nazis won. I think it's the strangest thing I have ever seen in my entire life. A pro-Nazi memorial in the middle of the United States. While what I am saying in this shot is completely irrelevant to the video, this is unfortunately the only footage I captured of the rest of the property, including the former SS officer's home. I believe this is the first time this has been filmed um, for YouTube. So I'm pretty sure that we are the first ones to actually come here and film this for YouTube. I walked down the overgrown and dilapidated staircase. Long ago, these wooden stairs were completely visible and the side of the building was well kept. Below the patio and the memorial was an even stranger sight, the honorary hall for Adolf Hitler. Once again, surreal scene. Honorary hall for Adolf Hitler. A lot of these tiles, it looks like granite. This is expensive stuff. He was serious and he put, he sunk a lot of money into this. Uh, my guess is that he put his entire life savings to building this thing. Because he was just a farmer, he didn't have that much money. This is a building that pays tribute, that honors Adolf Hitler. And as you know, Hitler was Hitler. <laughs> Once again, very surreal. From what I can see, it's basically saying history is a lie. You shouldn't judge the Nazis. As an informed person, it's my job to expose the truth. See you can see here before you pass judgment with careful and equal consideration to both sides. You should listen to both sides before you see it's true or not. That I feel responsible to tell my fellow citizens the truth what was happening in Europe. The inside of Hitler's Hall appeared as a decaying classroom filled with debris and relics from its heyday. Years ago, this building was in terrific shape. Most of the interior was empty aside from a few bookshelves, tables, and chairs. And the far wall had a pair of red curtains that when opened revealed the shrine to Adolf Hitler with not one but two photos of the Fuhrer. 
Fortunately today, Hitler's Great Hall is not so great. This is the inside of the Honorary Hitler Hall. There used to be a bunch of Nazi memorabilia. Most of the books are still here. Um, they are once again pro-Nazi, anti-Jew. All these books are here to promote the notion that the Germans were being persecuted and Germany and Hitler and the Nazis were in the right. Not only did the hall hold pro-Nazi reading material, but it also housed some of the owner's personal effects, including a letter which details a bar fight he got into. Did he win? He, fought, he tried to fight the entire fight. Uh, cops had to show up. It, it mentions in the first hat, uh, on the first page you got a disorderly conduct charge. There's this professional sign here. What it says is, it says Hitler did not start World War II. Not, a, not one person was gassed to death in the Third Reich. Hitler provided religious freedom and separation from state through his Reichsgebet. Hitler advocated for Aryans, but respected all races. Uh, Hitler protected Rome and Paris and World War II. False, 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 and protected these these places from the Allied invasion. Okay, so this is somewhat true. Everything else is here is false. It's a very twisted view of history. This is all false. As you know, I don't even think I have to explain this. Plainly false Nazi propaganda. Once again, this is the kind of stuff you would see in a dystopian world where the Nazis won the war. I don't know how you say Hitler didn't start World War II. Maybe you could argue that the Versailles Treaty was unfair, which it was, but Hitler did start the war. This is the second plaque. Hitler brought work, bread, and dignity back to the German people. Hitler provided, uh, provided Germany with social security and health care. Every worker could buy a home and a car. Hitler united the German people and had a goal to unite Europe. Through, through his book Mein Kampf, Hitler provided direction for the future. While some of this is true because Hitler did manage to boost the economy, it's a one, you know, it's one-sided facts because he boosted the economy, but he also killed millions of people. I don't think every single worker could afford a home and a car, but he did manage to boost the German economy. That part is true. He had a public works program, much like uh, we had in the United States during the Depression. He did fix the roads. He did fix up Germany. So this is sort of true, but once again, very one-sided. After exploring the interior of the monument, we headed for the abandoned house of the former SS officer. At first, the basement of the house seemed extremely bland and unworthy of further investigation or documentation. However, my opinion immediately changed when I did some digging. Oh, let's see if there's anything cool in here. A lot of math equations. What the hell? Wrapped cylinder by... Pressed seal tank? Was this guy stealing trade secrets or something? There's a lot of, uh, maybe this guy was an engineer. What if we found some Nazi, like, Operation Paperclip shit? You think that's how he came over? There's something on rocket propulsion, dude. Dude, he might actually have been an Operation Paperclip scientist. Rocket prop I mean, yeah. See, look, rocket propulsion. He has names of uh, past rocket scientists, pre-World War II, it looks like. Goddard was an American rocket scientist. Dude, I think we've discovered how this dude came over to America. How a Nazi got him. Holy sh**. Dude. dude, this is this is the most insane thing I've ever found. That How, how does that line up with him serving on the Eastern Front? I think maybe the government wanted to keep all this secret. Uh, I thought we'd find a whole bunch of Nazi memorabilia in here. Instead, we found something just as interesting in my opinion. We found a whole bunch of patents for rockets. We found a lot of rocket equations, a lot of rocket research. Development for micro propulsion systems. Now, we originally thought the guy who served on the Eastern Front, the guy who built the Nazi Memorial, uh, came in through Operation Paperclip. This guy, this guy was Operation Paperclip for sure. What the Allies did, they recruited a whole bunch of Nazi scientists. The most well-known was Werner von Braun, the inventor of the V-2 ballistic missile, which the Germans used against the British. They took all these scientists, in exchange for rocket research, they gave all these Nazi scientists amnesty. Uh, so they agreed not to prosecute them, execute them, etc. Because the Allies wanted their research to use against the Russians during the Cold War. And actually a lot of American innovation came from a lot of uh, Nazi research and a lot of uh, Nazis were actually put to work by NASA. So that's what we originally thought, but we looked through it and we think it's actually his son. So that must have been his son. 
Maybe his son was a rocket scientist. Who was a rocket engineer and actually came up with some patents, uh, some new ideas. Hey, yo. Yeah. Even though he might not be Operation Paperclip, yeah. there are rocket pat rocket patents in here. So Max just found these schematics for rockets. United what States patent. Uh, over in, on the shelf. These are new rocket inventions uh, in 1991. So I think the son might have been a rocket scientist who actually invented something new. Or tried to. You don't think any of this would be classified, right? Probably not. Okay. This video is going on. If I get killed by the government, f*** it. Let's see what BS is in the news this morning. What? Like and subscribe! The upstairs was completely ransacked by vandals. The only thing left was Nazi propaganda and adult films. Yeah, you yeah, got Nazis and porn here. Wow. Nazi porn? What we found in here is Nazi propaganda and porn. Um, probably two things that are going to get this video demonetized, but we're still gonna put it up anyway. Echo and the Bunny Man. Yep, it says adult. It's born. White Panty Chronicles. Yeah. The bunker was used for Nazi propaganda. His house was used for porn. There's nowhere you can look where you will not find pornography. It's ridiculous. It's a of porn. It's literally, yeah, the, the, the house is the porn. Never have I been more glad to wear gloves when exploring a place. So this is a letter comparing the Founding Fathers of the United States to Adolf Hitler. There is no true freedom without the freedom to keep and bear arms. America's founding fathers recognized this simple fact when they wrote the Constitution. Ironic that under Hitler, every German citizen was encouraged to have at least one rifle, one shotgun, and one handgun. So here's an interesting photo. Black and white, obviously very old. Could they be Nazi officers still? For the war. That's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Also, go in the description, check out Dan Lee's channel, check out his videos, and see what he did for this video because I'm sure it's going to be dope. Oh, yeah.